Okay, what did you find out for your formula for a power series to represent any differentiable function? You want the nth term, but we can also start in the beginning. Because remember, t of x was equal to c0 plus c1 of x minus a plus c2 x minus a squared plus c3 x minus a cubed cn x minus a to the n, etc. Okay? You should. It's 8.7. Matt, do you have a question? Okay. What did you find out for the coefficients? I know you found so A lot of you found it out yesterday. There's some sort of factor that has to do with the derivatives. So, the first term is f of a, right? Plus. Then what's the next one? Guys, shh. It's f prime of a, x minus a. I'm going to do something to help us in a second. What was the next one? f double prime of a over 2 factorial, x minus a squared. Hey, guys. It doesn't matter if you're going to go get your picture taken. You need to be listening right now. Plus f triple prime of a. Justin, what's the denominator? Three factorial. Oh, I thought that was twenty-one. Okay. Shh. What's the nth term? And what's the nth term? What is it though? It's the nth derivative at a over n factorial, and it's x minus a to the nth. And it goes forever. It's an infinite series. Now, how can I remember this formula? I don't think you'll remember how we came to the formula. We came to it, David. How did we start? Our t of a and our f of a have to be the same at x equals a. Does that work, by the way? If you put in a here, you get f of a. And what happens to all the rest of these terms? They go away. Okay, and then we did the first derivative of t of x. So you need to write out t prime of x. And that's equal to f prime of x. Okay? Now, shh, you guys, let's make these all look alike. Guys, this is the first power. This is one factorial. This is one factorial, two factorial, three factorial. What's the factorial here? Zero. Then it's x minus a to what power? Look at the exponents. One, two, three. What power is that? Zero. And that's how I remember it, because they're all alike. And this is f of a. There's no derivatives, if you want to think of it as the zero derivative. So they all look the same. It doesn't matter how you think of it. Now, when a is equal to zero, we have a Maclaurin series. You need to know that. Then when you get onto the exam and they say, find the Maclaurin series, then you know that a is zero. We're always hoping it's zero. It's not fun when it's not zero. And you can look through the packet of problems I gave you. You will have a free response. Well, what does this look like? With a Maclaurin or a Taylor, you will. So if I want the Maclaurin series, let's call it m of x, it's going to be f of zero times x to the zero over zero factorial. Just so I get the same pattern all the way through. Plus, then it's f prime of zero x to the first over 1 factorial. Have you seen the pattern? Then it's the second derivative at 0. Then it's x squared over 2 factorial. And when you think about it, I actually get the... Uh, oh, I don't want to do it. Well, I can do it. But I actually can figure out the derivatives without knowing what the function is if I'm given the Taylor polynomial. We'll do some more of that tomorrow. Plus, tomorrow and as we work through AP problems, we'll come into it as we need to. It's the third derivative at 0, x cubed over 3 factorial. And then it's the nth derivative at 0, and it's x to the n over n factorial. 
So, I'm going to give you a job to do. Because some people are going to have to leave for their pictures. And, but that's okay. You can do this when you, now and you can do it when you get back. I want to find the Maclaurin series for e to the x. Oh, but that one's an easy one. And we want the Maclaurin series. Okay, let me talk just briefly about this, you guys. Because I'm not convinced, because I wasn't, sure what you exactly mean by centering your Taylor polynomial. What, why would we do that? Okay, you guys, once I get, yeah, it's going to be the most accurate there. If I center this at zero, which is the Maclaurin series, first we would do a tangent line and we'd put a whole bunch of terms in there. And tomorrow I can show you, well, I can't because we don't have the cast calculus. Well, I can show you on my cast calculator how you get the Maclaurin and the Taylor series out of it. But if I wanted to find, you know, e to the ninth point one power, if I wanted to look at that, I would center it at a equals 9, and then I can just put in point 0.1. So that's the thing, is you want to center it by wherever you, wherever you want to look at this series. When I do my Taylor polynomial, my Maclaurin uh, polynomial here, it's going to be pretty accurate as long as I'm close to zero. But the minute I get far away from zero, it's not accurate anymore. So then I want to center it. If I wanted to do 9.1, I'll center it at 9. And then 9.1 will be pretty close. The more I can do e this one, by the way, this converges for every value. Uh, I can use the one, the Maclaurin series for e to the x, but I would need a lot of terms to find e to the 9.1. If I want fewer terms, then I would center it over at 9. So I'm going to ask you to find this, and uh, I know some people have to leave. So go ahead and, and work it, and I'll walk around and help you. Doesn't surprise me. Yes. <laughs> And then we'll center it around, um, I don't know if you want to do A, you want to do it around 2 or something? Let's do X equals 2. So that's all we're going to do is we're going to center these. First one's the Maclaurin, next one is centering it, at, let's do it at 2. And I want to find the Maclaurin series for the sine, because you already know the cosine, because you've done the cosine. And then we'll find the cosine another way, and that's all there is for today. Now if you guys want your calculators, do you want calculators? They should be all be charged up. How many do I have in here?
green, not red. I got a different problem now. I have to hook this up for that. Because the one's canceled. Right, that's okay. And it wants three. Our calculator should probably show you how to use it. <laughs> the sign? It's just like the cosine. <laughs> then it's just going to be this. X equal, we're going to do it at A, so it's going to be F of A. So it's E to the A times X minus A to the 0 over 0 factorial. That's how I remember it. Plus E to the A, yes it is. It's x minus a to the first power over 1 factorial. It's got an e in it, and it's got an a in it. So there's nothing. It's just 1 over x. It's x to the n over n factorial. And then this is e to the a, x minus a squared over 2 factorial. So it's e to the a, x minus a to the nth over n factorial. Yeah. Okay, guys, get your calculators out. Show you how to use these. Everybody have one? First, turn it on. <laughs> now, it's great. I got the navigate over there, but I don't have a hook to my smart board, so that's a problem. I don't even know how to do it. Yeah, they're all on the floor. I tried to get you on the navigator, but that doesn't work for me.
Okay, that's when you turn it on. The scratch pad is to be used. Pardon? You guys, there's a lot of things on here. I can show you that. But the scratch pad is to be used when you just need to do a quick calculation. It is, all the capabilities of the calculator are not built into the scratch pad. A lot of people want to use scratch pad you know, for everything. You don't. You want a new document, especially if this is your Taylor polynomial. So you go to documents, and we can go to my documents. Let's see what's out there, because there is stuff out there. I don't know what's on yours, but you should have a whole bunch of stuff. Example. Examples. And there's some really cool things. Now, of course, you can't do this on your computer. You have to actually touch the machine with that. You don't have any examples? Well, I'll get you some. Uh, calculus? I only have one example. Getting started. Getting started. Okay. But I can give these to you. It takes two seconds to give them to you. And, okay, here's my document. How do I go over there? You go control, and then you press this little arrow. And that gets me to the next page. I mean, I opened a document. Well, we could start our own. Well, let's get a new document. I just showed you what's there. We'll get a new document, number one. Okay, what do we, we want to do? Graph, right? Oh, you want to do calculator. You do not have a CAS. I'm, I'm sorry, I ordered CASs, but they didn't come through. So the calculator is just the calculator. This isn't cost. This is, I'm borrowing. This is, now you press menu. Every single application on here has a different menu. So when you press menu, this is what I can do. But I don't know if that's what you guys can do. Yeah, you have more than actions. But try algebra on yours. It's exactly the same. Escape always. Or there's an undo key. Let me see. You're in the wrong mode. Menu. Oh, are you in calculator? I went to graph because you told me to go to calculator. So we're going to go and we're going to go control and add a page. And now we can do calculator. And now if I go, see the menu changes. Guys, go. I know you you get things that you're gonna you're gonna be gone tomorrow, so you really need to do that. But you know, I can find zeros. I'm not sure exactly what what yours will do because I've got the cat. Like if I want to expand, um, there's an undo button up here above the escape. You know, two x minus three. You have to you can't on yours because you don't have a cat. And we'll make that go to the fourth power. And we press enter, it will do that. That's what the cast can do for you. I can ask them to send this to me all over again, but for right now, where were we? What we have. You are allowed to use the cast on AP exams, everything except for the ACT. And the IB. I knew there were two. Yes, but only two problems are using calculators. But if I want to use it for the stats one, could I? Yes. I don't know if I need it. Oh, this has way more stats on it than your 84. You'd find it very useful. You might want to play with the stats to see what's on there. Okay. So if you have the cast, you can do a lot of stuff. Like, guess what else we can do? We can find the integral. Let's go to calculus. Integral is 3. And I can get an indefinite or definite integral. Let's integrate e to the x. Let's just integrate e to the x. Press menu. And it, 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 their learning curve is, is steep. But once you get it, you're going to like it. Now, this will integrate e to the x for me. It will not give me the plus c, though, I'm sorry to say. Give me e to the x. You have to remember plus c. But what if I try to do e to the x squared? Now, here's the other thing I can do. I can go back up, highlight that, press enter, and now I can go in and, you know, change it. Now I want x to be x squared. And I've told you that we can't integrate that one. I don't know if you believe me, but if I get the same integral back again, it can't be done. And I do. It can't be done. Well, that's how you know. If you want to try and integrate something, 
Because you, you have a regular one, you don't have a cast. Oh. You can't do this on the regular one. Sorry. You can only do definite integrals. Well, look what else we can do on the cast. If we go into calculus, you will not have all of this. Um, if I go to series, C. Taylor polynomials, generalized series. I don't know what the dominant term is. Isn't I don't know. I'm only a beginner, but I can do Taylor polynomials. I know you don't. So let, what do we do? We did the cosine, right? Notice where the trig is. Guys, pay attention. Notice what the trig is. It's over here. I'm going to do the cosine of x. I'm going to try to remember the syntax. Comma. And they keep moving the comma around on me, so I always forget where it is. And let's see. Now, I want a Taylor polynomial. I think I want to do it in X. I think I want that in X. And how many terms would you like for the cosine? Okay. So you can check your work. There it is. Is that not nice? Kevin, did you see that? You give it the highest degree. The cast will do this. I have a cast. Mrs. Hersman has a cast. Okay, so all I have to do, if I want to edit it, I can just do that, press enter, and I can go back and change that to 40. And notice that it's very forgiving. Whoa, I don't want 408. <laughs> and then I can put that in Y1. Let's see if, we, let's see if I can do this. Store it. I'm going to store it, which is here. I want to put that in Y1 of X. I hope you're okay with the fact that I make mistakes. Maybe I don't want it that. We'll see. Nope. I'm going to start with <laughs> one of X. Yes, you may. Okay. Okay. I've got to go back up here, pick that, enter, and now i got to store it. There it is. Oh, it is in Y1 of X. I'm okay. Now, I'm going to add another page. Here's the difference between the 84 and the Inspire. I don't have to, I'm not clearing this out. This is there. It's stored. I'm going to add a page. To add a page, I do Control and then Doc. And we want to add um, a graph. It, you save it, when you save it, it says, would you like to save? And you save it as, you type it in. We can click out of it, just like a Word document. And I want to put in Y1 of X. I'm hoping this works. <laughs> it doesn't always work. It is a computer. And as some of you found out, there is Y1 of X. Some of you found out that you, I can actually put test questions. That's my Taylor polynomial. That's not the cosine curve. I mean, it is. But I didn't type in cosine. Isn't that cool? We can't do those on that? On this? No, you can. You can you can type in each term individually. Oh, yeah. This did 40. <laughs> so for the project, I should go online. Do it that would be the easiest because then you can just you can um, then you can just print. So there's a print option here. <laughs> so we can we can get that on our computer. You can get this on your computer. You can get a cast version on your computer. Yes, you may do that. And when you when you buy one of these, if you buy, if you're going to be in engineering, now some schools won't allow you to use calculators, which I can't even understand why they wouldn't in physics, but they don't. Um, they don't have calculators at all. I think we were talking Yale, Colorado, Notre Dame. But, um, you know, if, if you're allowed to use it in statistics or your other classes, you have all this nice stuff. You have a nice document. Now, what I can do... Now, I want to enter something here, so I'm going to tab. I want to enter what the second function is. Let's put in the y equals 1. Remember, that was our linear approximation. And it's going to change color for us. Now, if I want to get back down to this entry line, I tab it. And now I want to do 1 minus x squared over 2. This is the last question in the... In the uh, 
on the project. Now, I want all of these. Okay, so this is the linear. There's the quadratic. And then I'm going to go in. I'm going to press tab. And that's and you guys will learn this faster than I did because you're used to playing games and stuff. Um, and yes, there can be games. So let's see, what was the next one? It's 1 minus x squared divided by 2 is plus, what's the next one? What's the next one? X to the fourth, right? Divided by. Now, I'm up in the exponent, you guys. So I always make this mistake. You have to arrow to the right to get it back down. Divided by or 3 factorial. So we see if we can find the factorial. <laughs> 3. And the factorial button, I'm going to guess, is going to be right up here. There's the catalog. Oh, I can't even see that. Yeah, I see it now. Yeah. No, I know. I know. I see it now. There's, that's where the special ones are. It's down here. It says a question mark. It has a whole bunch of stuff there. Press enter. I, oh, you're right. But that's easy. Okay, so I'm going to tab it. Now, I want to get back up to where I was, so I just arrow up, and I made a mistake. So I can go down here. Whoops, I was supposed to make that 4 factor. I wasn't thinking. It wasn't bad, actually. Okay. That's pretty neat, and you can print it out in the library and color. That's pretty neat. Now, how do you change the window? There are a couple ways. You can take your mouse, and you can drag this. That's changing it. Yeah, I find it hard to do. Look at that. Okay. Otherwise, you press menu. And window is four. Oh, watch the zooming in. Three. That's cool. Okay. You see you don't want to borrow it? Uh, do I want No, I'm going to break it. If you're going to break it, you put them back. <laughs> guys, i got to have them all back. I'm going to trust you here. And I want to zoom in on this point. All you do is put your mouse there and click on it. Keep zooming in. Look at that. So much easier to zoom in than on the other one. You don't have to switch the window. So if I want to zoom in there, zoom in there. If you would like to borrow them, but be, are you not going to be here tomorrow either? No, I'll be here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how about this? If you're going to borrow one so I can keep track, and that's fine. Just put your name on it. Put your name on the sheet if you're going to borrow one. Just put your name that you're borrowing one. They all have orange dots. <laughs> no, probably not. But I would be I would be careful with it, since I'm responsible. 